Germany against King. Everything started in the 90s. Bulgaria used to be a communist country until 1989. After the change, also that kind of music started to go through the border. And uh, I think the scene, uh, if we speak about parties and clubs, I think things started to happen in the mid 90s. And at that time, the people were still uh, very excited about uh, the new things from the West. I've always been into music, and I always liked dance music. I was, when I was a kid, I was into disco music. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the most classy version of it, because at that time we didn't have really a big choice in the market in mm -hmm. Bulgaria. So uh, yeah, I was listening to, to the radio and uh, every at that time in 1991 there was uh, a dance music show every every Sunday afternoon on the national radio. When I say dance music, I don't mean techno and house. It was yeah. just uh, the most music. obvious yeah. uh, hits that you could hear in the, in the discotheques. You know, <laughs> at about that time I heard also besides all the obvious. Uh, Hits. They were uh, tracks by uh, a project called KLF. Later on, I think 1992, the radio DJ played something that uh, he called it, uh, techno. And that that uh, track really blew my mind. combination of both improvisation and a little preparation at home because when people invite me to play let's say in Paris uh, those people they want to hear a couple of tracks which are known so I still have to be able to somehow play these sounds so of course I have some uh, pre-made loops with like the main melody or the main element from these tracks uh, but it's just a loop never change so if, if my hands are not moving this is the same loop all the time I decided to to make it this way Finally bought uh, not so bad uh, speakers, but till a couple of months ago I used uh, uh, speakers with, without a brand. It's just called uh, Near Field Monitors Made in China on the back. And the software, it's a free software. There is only one guy who made the software, it's not a crew. A guy from uh, Helsinki. This software is called Buzz. First thing I, I learned, mm -hmm. and uh, I just stayed with it. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that's why I say uh, I have a get get to approach to making music because in the beginning I just didn't have the options to uh, to have a proper studio. So I started with this software just because uh, the requirements were uh, very low. I had a slow computer, and this was the only thing that can run on the computer. Uh, but actually it was a good choice, it's a modular platform, which means uh, you can't really build your own machines, but you can change, uh, uh, seriously you can uh, change uh, the behavior of, uh, of all the existing.
before that I just used a computer to make music and I tried to uh, to make everything perfect I was so much into sound design since I started to play live I started to improvise on stage I started to make mistakes and I kind of like and during the years in the last couple of years when I was building the live setup I bought a lot of uh, analog uh, gear new one not old one but interesting uh, new gadgets which I never managed to use uh, on stage uh, but uh, I decided, okay, I, I have this great uh, inspiring gear, I want to do something with it. So I decided to do it myself, I just I decided to use only this couple of uh, tone generators. Yeah. Okay. And of course I finished the project uh, at the end, after a, a lot of uh, sessions with uh, all the machines, I edit all the information on the computer, so the computer was a little bit involved. But uh, first of all was this hand, hands-on approach, just playing live and recording. Twice I consider myself as an underground artist, but uh, yeah, I realized that uh, being this year number three at Resident Advisor, it's, uh, it means that I have some popularity. So, But what is underground? I, I separate music by interesting, and then acts by interesting yeah. and more functional. I think that I'm still not that functional. I take risks. When you listen to the CD, you're gonna yeah, see why. Yeah, actually, I really <laughs> want to. I, I'm really excited. I about guess it. if I was a commercial artist, or uh, uh, how to say in English, uh, yeah, let's say if I was a commercial act, uh, that wouldn't be the step. I would probably yeah, yeah, yeah. make something even more obvious and more uh, functional, but actually I take the risk with something that uh, people might not uh, take. But I have success at the moment and uh, I'm not ashamed of that. I, but it's very important not to to forget where you're coming from and uh, not to, to cut the connection with the, your origins. Yeah, you still live in Sofia. Yeah, I still live in Sofia, yes.